Hey, Media Mail Gang, it's Katie with Katie Reads. If you're new to my channel, my name is Katie. I resell used books on Amazon and eBay, and I also sell used vintage books, bookish crafts, just a lot of different ephemera related things on Etsy. I also resell and source other items for eBay and Amazon, but primarily on this channel, I talk about reselling used books on eBay and selling book crafts on Etsy. That's the bulk of my channel. I do sporadically talk about Amazon, but if you're looking for Amazon FBA heavy content, this isn't the channel for you. If you're an existing subscriber and you're watching this video, hi, welcome back. Thanks for being here. So this video, I wanted to talk about something that took me a while to understand. It took me quite a while actually to understand. Uh, when I first found YouTube, reselling YouTube, I found uh, Steve Rakin with Rakin Profit. And he kept talking about studying the sold listings. And I had no clue what that meant. And it was really weird to me how he kept talking about studying the sold listings. Look at sold listings. And I was like, what are you like? I know how to look at sold listings to figure out if I should sell this item. But to just blatantly study the sold listings, what does that even mean? So I thought I would do a video and we would study sold listings together. And it'll, I'll probably keep it at like 10 minutes ish, maybe. Um, so that way it's not a super long video, but just to kind of give you an idea of what studying the sold listings looks like and ways that you in your spare time could be on eBay studying sold listings and getting a feel of the book category and getting a feel of things that are selling in the book category. So, I am going to add my screen here. You go to eBay, obviously. <laughs> and then uh, I go to categories. And you can even do this from your phone as well. Um, it You got to kind of navigate it a little bit different on your phone, but you can navigate it on your, on your phone. And you can study sold listings on your phone too. You don't have to do it on a computer. I'm just doing it on a computer because obviously I need to share my screen for the sake of this video. I felt like doing it on my mobile phone probably wouldn't like give the best quality for what I'm trying to show. So all categories, let's go to, where are the books? I know they're here. I know books are here. It just takes a minute to find it. Oh, right here. <laughs> See, I told you books were there. And it's probably down here too. So books, movies, and music. So I'm just going to go to books and magazines. And this is the general category of books and magazines. So I'm going to go even further down in the niche and click books specifically. Okay, so... Now we are at books specifically. And right off the bat, something that you need to keep in mind as a seller as well, right off the bat as someone who's browsing, like, because how I'm looking, eBay thinks that I'm potentially going to buy something. And immediately, like, there's Andy Warhol collection. And these are high dollar books. So immediately... Andy Warhol apparently is selling well for it to be on the front page of what eBay is showing potential buyers when they click the general category of books. Then underneath that, eBay shows best sellers. So again, this is like important stuff you'll want to keep in mind as a seller. And Anne Rice recently passed away, The Vampire Chronicles. This edition, it's leather bound. It's really sought after. So yeah, it makes sense that that's that that is got some like uh, new age content, Bibles, religious stuff, always selling well. So right here we've got this isn't bestsellers. This is just all listings, okay? And it's searching by best match. So like people's listings are showing up. 
and they're not listings that are only stock photos like someone actually took a picture here someone actually took a picture here someone actually took a picture here oh you'll see some sponsored ones here those are the promoted listings so this is actually really cool really cool to look at and what they kind of decide to show me as a potential you know buyer and then top rated I assume that these are top rated books, probably good rated sellers too, but like see how they have the five star would recommend, would recommend, would recommend. So like these are books apparently that people would recommend. Okay. So anyways, these are listed items and I think that's still relevant. I think listed items are still relevant, but you want to study the sold listings. So what we are going to do is I'm going to niche down even further and do antiquarian and collectible books because those are my favorite. And then we're going to go here where it says all filters. And then we're going to go to show only. And then we're going to click sold items and completed items, just like you would on your phone. We're going to do apply. And then here we will see all the ones under antiquated and collectible books that have recently sold. Um, I could even add an additional filter that has price. So let's say I want to see books that sold for $50 plus. So now we have books that sold for over $50. So we have, wow, 1693 Marshall Epigrams Roman, po Roman Poetry. Good Lord. WW2 World War II German Kriegs Model Rifle Bayonet. What in the world? That went for $334. Holy crap. Dante, The Divine Comedy, The Franklin Library. This is like mint condition book. It's beautiful. Look at that leather. That's gorgeous. Sold for 75 bucks. Rob, Ducker, Rob Ducker's Masters of the French Court. That was best offer taken. That one was at 56. Designing for people. Henry Dreyfus, Simon Sucher, 1955. Inscribed hardcover, no dust jacket, first edition. Ooh, the occult reliquary, $325. This, and this sold today. This intrigues me. This is interesting. Wow. Images and artifacts of the Ritual Elderman's collection. Now, see, look at these pictures. <laughs> these pictures, no offense to the seller, but these pictures are trash. It doesn't even show, like, Three Hands Press 2010. It doesn't even show the copyright page or the front of the book anything and it sold for $325. Wow. The pigeon, the ostriches, children of the middle waters. So you guys see what I'm kind of doing here? Like I'm literally like I just picked my filters under a certain category, which was sold listings, completed listings, and a price point, $50 plus. And this is literally just what I'm doing. I'm browsing what has sold. The Little Prince. Oh my God. Okay. I had this book. But I did not have the night. Oh, let me go here. I did not have the 1943 edition. I had one from like the 70s. But oh, oh my God. This is definitely keep your eye out for this one because you can find this in the wild. I got it through a free book pickup. Oh, it even had an inscription. Happy birthday to Philip from Aunt Ruth. <laughs> it's always Aunt Ruth giving books. 
but yeah, this sold for $129. That's so cool. These are good pictures also, by the way. Shout out to the seller. These are good pictures. These are Katie Reed's approved pictures. <laughs> wow, this is cool. This is really cool. I mean, they could be a little bit more clear. I, I would critique it a little bit, but nice. Nice sale. The Little Prince is definitely one you want to keep your eye out for. Murray's English Grammar. Old textbooks, old school books, old elementary books. Chicago Board of Trade 1859 hardcover book. Annual reports, first to sixth. 624 pages. What a title. Montique Summers, the complete works of Thomas Shadwell. Hmm. Antiquarian Russian book, the tale of the host of Iger, Igor. $550. This I gotta see. Wow. Look at the inside of that. I don't know why the zoom thing while I'm hovering over it isn't working. Sorry, guys. Wow. See, and taking pictures of illustrations inside the book is a really good idea because it gives a lot of context. It looks like a lot of this book is, maybe the whole book is just illustrations. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of this book before in my life, but very beautiful, very beautiful book. Elementary Particles, first American edition, 50 bucks. Oh, wow. 1929 Hibbard Spencer Bartlett Hardware and General Merchandise Antique Catalog. Oh, wow. Mechanic tools. Oh, wow, this is cool. Now, while this is a book, technically, this has, oh, double bit Michigan pattern. Hey, this probably has some type of advertisement inside of it. So, I mean, it sold for $60. I wouldn't recommend shipping a book that sells for probably over 50 bucks. Um, or even 20, really. Um, I wouldn't recommend sending them media mail. Anyways, you really should just charge the extra or pay the extra and send a priority so that way you have that insurance. Um, but media mail, you're not able, that's why comic books can't go media mail is because they have advertisements in them. So just kind of something to keep in mind. But this was smart of the seller. They showed the guns. They showed sports. They showed equipment. Um, just a lot of different things in this book. That was smart. It's a really nice book. Front cover's pretty damaged. But overall, it's a nice book for being an antique. Well, almost an antique. It's almost 100 years old. Almost to 2029. Divine Comedy, Dante. Okay. The new Tom Swift Jr. Adventures. So this is definitely by... Gross it and Dunlap because you can just tell because they look so similar to Nancy Drew books. Yeah, Gross it and Dunlap. <clears throat> These look just like the yellow edition Nancy Drew books. So this is something to look out for. This is a lot. This is a lot of 31 books. 
for 150 bucks and then economy shipping. Again, I don't recommend shipping high dollar books out media mail. I just don't. Ooh, right here. 1880s family Bible. This is why I love selling Bibles, especially the old school family ones. Now, this looks like it's in a different language. Swedish. Okay. So this is a different language, which is probably why it went for some decent coin. Let's see here. Like, see that? That is so important, especially like if there's writing inside, you could still sell it. But if there's no writing inside, oh, that's even better. I love selling family Bibles. What else do we have? The Crimson Fairy Book, Andrew Lang, eight color palettes. That's interesting. A lot of these I don't, there's only a couple that I know. So see, in studying the sold listings, that's the point. Like you're learning books to be on the lookout for. Like you're looking at your own bolos right here. You don't need to watch a YouTube video for anyone to tell you because you can just look at the sold listing yourself. I mean, granted, like, you know, we're still on today. Today is January 17th. We're still on today. And there is over 96,000 results. So you could probably only do this so long and you're going to, you know, go cross-eyed. But, ooh, 1978, Stephen King book, The Stand, Double Day First Edition, Dust Jacket. Nice. Oh, the Harvard Classics, 50 book set. That sounds about right. From 1910, 149, best offer. Whoa, $1,500. Shaggle Illustrations for the Bible, 1956. Wow. Let's look at the Stephen King one. That perked my interest. Oh, wow. It's a nice one. And it's not signed. This one isn't signed and it's still sold for 380 bucks. So Double Day and Company, it's probably the published. Oh, yeah. And this is a sign that it's the first edition. So they're showing you the little details. They have the copyright page in here. First edition. And it's got the dust jacket. And then they're showing it to you without the dust jacket. Pictures could be a little bit clearer. But the seller did a good job with the pictures that they chose to take. They could just have been a little bit clearer. But Oh, wow. 259 Best offer. But Sybil Leaks, Sybil Leaks Book of Curses from 1975. Prentice Hall Wicca Occult. Rare book. Magic. It's taboo. So, I mean, that's, that's probably why it's rare. It probably was limited print. And, you know, it's probably heavily sought after. The works of George Meredith, limited edition, 35 books, rare signed. I would say this one went for only $62, probably because the condition was so nasty. This will also teach you the difference between, like, first editions, first printings, the importance of signatures, the importance of condition. Studying the sold listings does honestly teach you a lot. It really does. Oh, Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway, 1952, $62. The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald, first edition library in a slip case. Nice. It's a nice one, 170 bucks. First edition library slipcase. So, I mean, things that you can probably find at library sales. Although a lot of libraries tend to look things up on Biblio before they price them or A books, but still a potential. Complete works of Mark Twain, 26 books with autobiography, $290. Joseph Smith, Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ from 2004. 
$330, but it went with best offer. Let's look at one more page. John Carter of Mars, limited rare edition. I have no idea what that is. Eastern Press, like Eastern Press is leather bound nautical library, 11 book lot, very good condition. Sold for $549 plus $70 shipping. Yeah, Eastern Press is where it's at. It's if you can ever find an Eastern Press or Harvard Classics for cheap at estate sales or library sales, you need to grab them, especially if they're in good condition. Now, this is an example of how a really old book doesn't necessarily command a lot of money. So this one right here is 16, from 1666, The Prisoners by Titus Macius Platus, War Slavery. Only sold for $96 for shipping. Now, some could argue that the seller just didn't know what they were doing. Um, but it potentially could have really only command that type of money. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. Very beautiful book. There's the outside of it. Based on the pictures, I would say this seller knows what they're doing, so they've done research. Um, so yeah, it could have only commanded that type of money. You know, not everything because it's super old is heavily sought after, and the market are people like you and me, and they, you know, the market decides the price. So. Yep, more some more Harvard classic books, a really big set of 49 for 250 bucks. Nice, nice. You'll find these a lot at library sales too sometimes. Or even Facebook Marketplace. You could find things like that on Facebook Marketplace, people trying to get rid of them or selling them for cheap. Like you could buy that for $30 and still flip it for $250 free shipping and still make a decent profit. Hawkins Electrical Guide. I actually, wow, I actually sold a set like this. Um, mine sold for 50-ish dollars. It was a little bit newer. This set is older from 1917. Mine was, I think, from like the 30s or 40s. Um, so, wow, that's cool to see. That's really cool to see. Little Women, Easton Press, $60. So Easton Press books, Easton Press is the publisher for you guys to kind of understand why I keep saying Easton Press. The book is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. However, Easton Press published it in 1976, leather bound collector's edition. That's why, and it's a beautiful shape. It looks like it's in beautiful condition. So that's why it's $60. So you guys can kind of understand where that's coming from. I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. So yeah, Easton Press. And Easton Press just feels different. It looks different. The index inside pages look different. Easton Press is just, once you see them often enough. Richard Hamilton, the American Pop Expressionist Godfather of Street Art Book. <laughs> what? $349. I need to start learning more about art books. So this actually is educating me quite a bit because art books apparently can go for some pretty big money. There are only two freaking pictures in this listing and it sold for $349. I can't. How does that happen? How does that work? Where do they do that at? <laughs> All right. So anyways, um, I tried not to have this go too long, but I already see we're like a good 15, 20 minutes in. So that is how I study the sold listings. I will also pay attention to listings that they show me right away when I bring up that category that are for sale, because that also kind of tells you what eBay is pushing out to potential buyers. It could be directed towards me specifically, but um, Overall, it's just interesting to see what they have in like the top rated or the best sellers 
um, you know, things like that. So that is something to kind of keep in mind as well when you are looking at sold listings. And again, you can do this from your phone. It takes a little bit different navigation, especially if you have iPhone versus Android. Going into the app can sometimes look a little different depending on what type of phone you have, but it is something that you can do directly from your phone as well. So if you're just relaxing, laying on the couch, and you want to learn a little bit more about book category or clothing or maybe grocery or whatever, um, you can go into those categories, click sold and completed listings, uh, figure out a price point, or you could just look at the sold listings and it'll show you all different types of price points. Um, kind of up to you. If you wanted to look at a specific author, like for example, Anne Rice or Stephen King, you could put in Anne Rice or Stephen King into the search bar, do sold completed listings, type in a price point of let's say $50, and then you could see what books are selling by that author for over $50 as well. So there's a lot to be learned from the sold listings. I think a lot of people don't do it just because it is very time consuming. And an argument to that is how is doing this on your own any different than watching a YouTube video or a what sold video by a YouTuber? Don't get me wrong. It is really nice seeing what sells for other people, especially in categories that maybe you aren't into. Um, but just keep in mind, like you could be doing your own research as well and learning about bolos as well in certain categories. So that is what it means to study the sold listings. I hope you guys liked this video and I will see you in the next one.